We didn't talk about this yet, the TJ Dillashaw adverse USADA findings and him relinquishing his title. Thoughts on that? Um, you guys know TJ is my boy. My only thing with TJ is because USADA is so strict, I get to see what it, what it, what it is first. Is it a diuretic? Was it actual steroids? Like what exactly is it? Um, them only give him a year though, makes me believe it's not something that we think it is. And all, but what else is kind of interesting is him relinquishing the belt so fast. Yes, that's the awesome. So something's up there. But also that that dude that he works with who's like the fucking Sal Calvita. Yeah, Calvita. like when you're doing that much stuff and the how strict USADA is, yeah man. It's gonna be interesting to see what it is though. Yeah sucks for tj really sucks for tj definitely and but, uh, but again the, you, you saw this fucking the ufc up it's so strict right yeah so misha t even said that this might be a situation like john jones with pico grams stuff from a long time ago they're able to catch right now maybe we don't know right no if it's a year i doubt it's pico well, who knows if, it, if but if it is P, let's say it is i don't think it is because say it is pico grams that's out from a long time ago and you let jones fight with it tj wouldn't relinquish his belt yeah, as true. fast you would fight the fuck out of that you hire a lawyer and you'd sue the fuck out of the commission or the ufc because it doesn't work that way because how can you be like, well we've done enough research on john i know he keeps failing but we're gonna let him fight yeah but i test for the same thing i know dude but we just it doesn't work that way we don't have enough research on it we're gonna have to spin you there's no way you could do that i mean not necessarily so i don't thing. think it's that I, I listen cutting to 20 cutting to 125 you know uh diuretic um epo there's there's a lot of things you would do to get there i have i'm i have no idea what it is yeah. i'm gonna try to start any rumors but i would assume them only give him a year it's not as bad as we think shitty situation for tj though definitely this is his first flagging thing what'd you say i don't think i think this is his first flagging Oh yeah, no, he's you know he's, he doesn't have a history of this or nothing like that. The only thing anyone can go off of is Cody Garbrandt and Alpha Male when they were going through their whole dilemma, uh, saying that TJ is the one who taught him how to do steroids and all yeah. that stuff, which I don't really buy. Uh, speaking of Cody, a few people made posts after finding this out, and Cody posted this, and I still don't understand it. I don't know if you guys can understand this. It's a coffee emoji and a it's just kind of like you like oh, come on bro i'm old man and then connor says i called that little snake way back i'm the new saint patrick yeah a lot of people are the santa are said out. mr Faber himself told me in person once that his former teammate abuses from something and of course other members that we know as well uh the only thing is when when one person is doing if there's a camp and there's one person doing it Y'all chances are yeah oh excuse me y'all do <laughs> you're all doing so it doesn't work um if the ufc will ask me to fight for a vk top tomorrow i will agree with that down my mind okay um uh, mike Chiesa, can't say i'm surprised what a very unfortunate situation for the bound weight division well, just a bunch of bad. different ones so where do we people like pile on it when when we then and all these guys piling on it when you know you saw it as a bunch of bitches when after we went through the john jones stuff and you know when and even fucking uh tim means and uh you romero and you know all these guys and having all these issues we don't know what it is and the guy's gonna fucking tweet out well this is this is bad can't say i'm not surprised i'm in the men's like it's like what are you That's doing just this is just asking for attention fucking knew it that's why he's so good yes that's why he's so good i'll tell you what take the same thing that he got busted for and then try to beat tj dillashaw let me know how it goes for you yeah we have to figure out what it is first too no one knows 
You know, if I'm a UFC fighter, though, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to jump on it, man. You saw it is so strict. Who You're going to be next, man. Now, if it's straight up steroids, go ahead, pile on. But until we know, I, I would hold off, man. Yeah, be fair. It's like fucking uh, Dr. Dre. You see him talking shit. Oh, man, that's all. <laughs> you see him talking shit to the parents, that, like, and then people bring up his stuff. And they're like, yeah. uh, excuse me, sir. You made a seven, $70, million. $70 million donation to USC the same year your fucking daughter got into the school. Why are you jumping on? Why are you piling on? Those people already know they fucked up. Why are you piling on? What are you doing? Yeah. And now everyone's, whoa, dude. Your daughter got in. Uh, what are we doing, man? And he deleted the post, too. Why would you do that? It's too late. <laughs> I well, know. It's simply too I don't late. know why they do that. But with fighters, like, dude, I'm telling you, wait. Just wait, man. Yeah. What else you got? Um, saw some of the fights. Saw the main event, co-main event. Dude, Milwaukee's own Anthony Pettis pulled it off. Didn't see that, man. I love the people are like, dude, you're wrong again. Didn't call that one. Nope, didn't call Anthony Pettis doing a fucking Superman punch off the cage, punching Wonder Boy in the face. Didn't call that one. That would be a tough one. No one did. I don't think anyone did. No, there's a reason why they're underdogs, you morons. Um, get fucking good for Pettis, man. You know, I, I thought it was going to be a tough fight for him. Even though he was lighting up Thompson's leg in the beginning, I didn't think they'd play that much of a factor. And as the, the fight went on, I thought eventually uh, Thompson would catch him. But fucking the resurgence of Anthony Pettis is real, man. At welterweight, I, I st and I love Pettis, man. I absolutely love Pettis. One of my favorite guys in the sport. Great dude. Uh, his brother's a great person. Phenomenal champion. First guy in Wheaties box. You know, he's a Hall of Famer, first ballot. He has the most, you know, epic uh, fucking kick of all time. That being said, I, at welterweight, I, I look at the matchups, I just don't like them. I look at him, I'm just like, fuck, man, that's some tough goes for him there. You, you look at the top 170 years, you know, the, the, obviously he's not going to fight Woodley, so let's not even talk about that, but Colby with the grappling, obviously he just knocked out Wonder Boy. We saw what Dos Anjos did to him. Mazadal is a tough task. Ben Askren, he trains with, so they want to fight him. Darren Till, a lot bigger, come off a loss. That could be fun. Ponsonibio, okay. Robbie Lawler, that'd be fun as fuck. I'll take that. <laughs> there you go. I'll take Robbie Lawler. Robbie Lawler, Anthony Pettis, sign me the fuck up. But those other, if if I'm Anthony Pettis and what he's done his career and the names that he's beat, I'm talking about first ballot Hall of Famer, what he's done, um, he deserves like a huge mega fight, huge mega fight. He deserves, which he, you know, he got against Wonderboy Thompson. Cause you look at him, you know, he beat Michael Chiesa and he submitted him. Chiesa is a black belt and very well subversed. He, he, he's a monster on the ground, black belt, straight up black belt, amazing uh, fighter. Submitted him and then he lost Tony Ferguson, which early on too, that first round, one of the best rounds of the year by far broke his hand ended up dropping tony and you know and then he fucking ko's wonder boy thompson so he's right there but you look at the guys that he's beat man the guys that he's lost to first ballot hall of famer for him it has to be a super fight it has to be like a robbie lawler it has to be um a jose aldo uh, or a Con conor mcgregor when i saw conor tweet that out you know and, and i tell you guys that if i'm conor i never fight again but if he did want to come back that would be a fun one to come back to. And it, it plays well into his, into his style. That'd be a great fight to come back to. I'd love it if Pettis got that fight. Pettis deserves that, man. Pettis deserves that. For Wonder Boy, it's back to the drawing board, right? Not over. He, I, I, you know, Wonder Boy, I think we should, and I've always said call him Wonder Man, but. <laughs> this sounds weird. Does that sound weird? Wonder Man? How about just the Wonder? They call him Brian the Kid. Well, or the Wonder, yeah. I like just the Wonder. Um, but shout out to Anthony Pettis, man. Fucking did it. Good for him, dude. Good for him. Uh, then the other, only other one I saw was Curtis Blades. Just kind of ragdoll Justin Willis around. That fight made no sense to me. Both those fights made no sense to me. But all right, there you go. Curtis Blades doing the goddamn thing. Curtis Blades is a nightmare for guys to fight. A fucking nightmare. Great ground and pound. Phenomenal wrestler. Has a chin, only loses to guys named Francis Ngannou. Outside that, you're in trouble. 
Shout out to Curtis Blades. The fucking high altitude uh, team is doing the damn thing. They're doing the damn thing. That's about it, man. I mean, of course, UFC 238 is happening in Chicago. Oh, I just got back. I just got back, Lewis. I'm going to pack my bags again and jump on a plane tomorrow morning, fly to Chicago. Uh, main event, what is it? It's, um, who is it? Cerrone versus... No, 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 no that's like... Oh, no, Cejudo, oh, Cejudo Marias. Yeah, yeah, Henry Cejudo versus Marlon Marais. That's a yeah. good fight. That's a great fight. Of course, Henry Cejudo just beat uh, TJ Dillashaw after beating Demetrius Johnson. Makes him, you know, one of the best in the world for sure. Uh, if he can become a two-weight division champion, that'll be amazing. And put him on the pound-for-pound -pound list completely. I don't know if you've been following the embedded and following the MMA news, Lewis, as much as I do. But uh So Hudo is 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 I like you know he's kind of disappearing up his own ass a little bit. And really? I say that well he's got his own security detail now. He's he's like, you know, listen, you're the world champion. You're gonna feel yourself a little bit. You know what I mean? You gotta do that, you know? He's he's the champion of the world. Everyone's kissing his ass, they're holding doors open for him. He's doing PR tours, you know. But he's got his own security detail. He's got people holding his belt in the background for him. You know, it's that like, steady on, bro. Okay. Well, Calm down. Calm down. Roll. I'm not hating. You know, look, it's absolutely unnecessary. Nobody gives a fuck if Henry Sudo walks into a building. I got to be honest with you. It is like, <laughs> you can no, fucking. No, no, stop. Olympic champion. Not enough that he needs security. He doesn't need security. He doesn't champion. need. Nobody's attacking Henry Cejudo because he's the fucking UFC 125 pound champion. No one really cares that much, and that's fine. But here's what I like: what he's doing. It's almost like a self fulfilling prophecy. He's creating that hype for himself, so then other people go like, "Oh well, he's a big deal, isn't he?" And you have to believe it yourself before other people are going to believe it. He's just drinking his own Kool-Aid, and I don't hate it. I'm not hating it. I'm just calling what it is. He's just, it's all sort of creating a perception like he's a bigger deal than he really is. And if it's deliberate, which I believe it is, good for him, because at the very least, he understands that he has to do that. Did he conceive, believe, and therefore achieve? That's it. Yeah. yeah no, no you're right you're right he is and i think he's doing it you know i'm you know i'm having fun i think he's doing it a little tongue-in-cheek he's, he's having a bit of fun with it i think he realizes when he was doing the media day this week in la where they always do it this one spot i forget the name of it he had two guys in the background and i think they were his buddies one was his training partner and they got shades on the, the being like oh they were doing it to be know. funny they were doing it to be like uh i think so i think so I okay. hope so. I, I fucking hope so. I think so. I think that it, it was a bit, okay? And he had his trade partner, like the skinny, because because one of the security guys, Harrington could have beat him up very, very easily, okay? Definitely. So it has to be a bit. It was funny. You know, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. You're making out like you're a, a big star. Uh, but he is. He is an Olympic champion. He is the 125 champ. And if he wins on Saturday night, he's going to be the 135 pound champion as well. But that's where it becomes a question because Marlon Marais is very, very, very good. What are you Googling, Lewis? I'm just trying to look for the pictures of the uh, security detail behind him right now. I can't find it. What are you drinking? Yeah, is that chat. water? What is that water? Water in a beer bottle? That's weird. <laughs> I, I, I picked up the wrong glass. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, oh yeah, here he is with the guy in the background right here. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And then th there's an agent dude that's like, you know, about five foot one and weighs about a hundred pounds. So he's not doing much. Listen, if he beats uh, Marlon Moraes on Saturday night, becomes a two weight division champion. My God, he's one of the best forever. He really is. There's not many people that are, are double champs. He joined a very, very elite club. And then when you combine that with being an Olympic champion as well, I think that's fair to say. Well, it's definitely in the discussion of being the most successful combat sports athlete of all time. Definitely in the discussion. Definitely. Can we stop saying champ champ? You didn't say it just now, but can we? I hate it. I hate the, oh, no, no. the term. I, I didn't say it. I, I hate don't... it. I hate it. 
I you, hate you've it. said it in the past and I've never said anything, but every time somebody says champ champ, it makes me cringe. I'm like, just sh who said it the oh, first time? Whoever, whoever did it, whoever created that the first time, fuck you. Whoever first said champ champ, suck a dick. It sucks. Okay. It finally, sucks. Finally, finally, something that I actually want to talk about because we have to talk about the MMA news on this <laughs> podcast. We do because we do. We do. But I'd rather talk about my detest for the expression champ champ. I, I would this card cancel them delete everything else we talked about unless you start with this because <laughs> oh hey champ champ oh fuck off you're a champ you might be a double champ call me a double champ two weight division champion yeah whatever but the champ thing it's got to stop it's also it's they don't stop. they don't allow you to keep both titles or do they i don't even know what the fucking rule is anymore i don't know we talk about this sport for hours every single week and i still don't really understand what the rule is about a fighter having two titles and about whether or not he can defend them because on one hand here they can on one here they strip them or they relinquish them nobody has had two titles and defended one while holding both of them so you have to assume they cannot right but then cormier gave us conflicting information and he said oh well no that's not the case i can keep my title if i want i'm just i happen to be relinquishing it and amanda nunes isn't she still currently a two-way division champion yes technically yeah yeah, she hasn't been stripped of either, and she's fighting. Uh, I don't know who she's fighting. I'm sorry, but yeah, yeah, no. So, so I don't think you immediately get stripped. You don't. You are a two weight division champion. I guess it just depends what's going on with the division, how busy it is, and, and uh, I don't. You, you're right. There's no set protocol. There's no guidelines in place. It goes there straight isn't. back to that no. what we were saying before. It would be better if it was a rule a specific rule in place and we'll you know we've talked about this so many times i don't want to reiterate the same point over and over again but if you defend your title once every six months or once a year whatever the standard is if you make it black and white nice and clear we'll have fucking four titles if as long as you're adhering to those standards and that rule and it's not just some random thing like i don't it's just so wacky and out there right. the way that stop. it's done stop stop, stop. stop. We're, we're going off point here we're sorry. going off point sorry we're starting to we're starting to now get back into serious MMA talk, okay? What is it about Champ Champ that you don't like? What is it about that that irritates you, that grinds your gears, that you were felt compelled to say that you hate it so much? I saw the way you looked at me. You thought I said it, but I didn't. What is it about that expression that gets on your tits? It's just annoying, but then also when you look a little deeper, it was just one dude who said it, right? And now everyone's just copying this fucking little fruity saying that I don't like. So it's like, it's, it's not original. Fruity. It's fruity as it shit. It is fruity. It's yeah. Fucking fruity. Especially when another guy says it. Well, yeah. I just think of Karen Bryant. Karen Bryant used to drop the champ champ a lot to DC all the time, you know? And, you know, that's not too bad. But if a guy says it, it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. I don't like it. Get a hold of yourself, man. Boom. Yeah, I don't like it. That's what I say. Champ, um, you're a champ. You're, you're a champ. I, do they do that in boxing? Because in boxing, there's a lot of multiple weight division champions. Like, yeah. like there's three weight division champions in boxing. They don't go, hey, mm -hmm. champ, champ, champ. Yeah. Well, that's what I do now. That's what I do. Champ, champ, champ. Champ, 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 champ. Myth. To champ, champ. Floyd Mayweather, the champ, 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 champ. Ah, exactly. Yeah. Manny Pacquiao was a champ, 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 champ at one point. <laughs> you know, Jesus Christ, when are we going to stop? Is he champ? Isn't that good enough? The champion falling. I mean, come on, guys. He's a champ. We get it. Champion. There you go. It's like, that's all you got to say. It covers the, the landscape of yeah. being a person. You're a champion. You don't have to be a two-weight division champion. You don't have to be a champ, champ. You're a champion. Yeah. Just, and, just just be happy with what you've got in life. Yeah. You know what? That's them overcompensating. You got the belt already. What do you need to be fucking called the champ champ for? We need to find the origin of that. And whoever the whoever is the origin of champ champ, they need to go. We need to they need to be out out. Was it Conor McGregor? I, think I feel like be, it might have been. Might have been DC. I don't even Conor know. McGregor. I have no idea who it was. You know, Conor's been talking shit this week. Who was he talking shit about? He's always talking shit. That's all he does these days. Talking shit. I can't remember what it was without looking. We haven't got Harrington. Guys, if you haven't noticed, we talk shit on Harrington every week. But we haven't got him here this week to fact check us, to give us info, to send us little notes. Harrington, I'll say, you missed. You missed, buddy. But don't get, don't start getting too big for your britches. 
Well, you know what he tried to do? He keeps on trying to um, shoehorn in a segment where he corrects us on things that we got wrong the week before, the following week. Um, <laughs> but that's bullshit. That's like somebody watching two people playing chess and going like, oh, you see that move right there? Like, bitch, you're watching from bird's eye view. We're in the fucking driver's seat right now. Shit gets a little hot. Every once in a while, you misspeak. You say something wrong like, oh, my God, sue me. Backseat driver. Hamilton's a backseat driver. Uh, what do you call it in America? Sunday quarterback. Correct? No. Nobody's ever said that. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.